the hardest of choices are made throughout our lives, not only during hard times. However, in times like these, during the war, along with a nuclear annihilation threat to the world, oozing from under the ground of a delusional Russian Tars bunker, some of these choices are becoming exposed to the public, striking us with how hard it was to make them. Good afternoon, this is Henry Keane and our daily wrap-up show on Freedom TV channel. The Russian Volunteer Corps, which is a part of the armed forces of Ukraine, consists of Russian citizens who have decided to defend Ukraine. Since August 2022, they have been fighting against Russian army. We fight on Ukrainian side against the political regime existing now in Russia. We are, in a regular sense, servicemen. All the members of Russian Volunteer Corps are in the front lines, well, save for the rotated personnel, but we are as well political soldiers. There is a parallel process. And for us, this war is for Ukraine against the enemy. A man with a talking name, Fituna's goal is to do everything to turn Russia into a good neighbour, not only for Ukraine, but also for the whole world. Fortuna and his fellow brothers in arms are not the only ones. Since 2014, Crimea Volunteer Military Intelligence Battalion, led by Commander Isa Akayev, has also been protecting Ukraine. Mostly, the battalion includes Crimean Tatars, as well as Chechens and representatives of the nations of the North Caucasus. Why are they doing this? I mean, risking their lives, cutting any possible ties, whatever those might be, with the today's Russia forever. Maybe because these people understand, as clearly as only a few Russians do, if Russia remains as it is today, the events of February 24th will repeat themselves again and again. The Soviet Empire and its outdated spirit must end, including for the sake of the Russian nation itself in the first place. We're talking about Russians, we're talking about a conglomerate of a number of ethnic and subethnic groups, which today, after the victory of Ukraine and after liquidation of this existing political class rule in Russia right now, that they can get this opportunity for development. It's very important now for the regional movements, the regional resistant movements to exist, and it's important to eliminate the existing political class existing in Russia now. This was the agenda of the briefing, the sunset of an empire how the nations of Russia will exercise the right for the self-determination after the victory of Ukraine, which was held at Media Center Ukraine Ukr in form. What will happen to Putin then? Will we see him in The Hague on the bench? Will the new Russia's nation's representatives, those who are fighting its criminal regime now, be among the prosecutors? Oh, yes. We in Ukraine know this moment will come. For the sake of Ukraine and for the world's sake, this is a must. Yesterday was exactly a month since Ukraine returned her son to itself. And it causes massive resentment, anger and Russian Tsar's offended pride. Since a hasty falling back from the right bank of the Dnieper River, the Russians won't stop terrorizing the city. Just yesterday, December 10th, Russians shelled the region 45 times. The Russians just fired all of it. Artillery, MLRS, tanks and mortars and all of the most terrible and powerless of curses. Two civilians killed, five injured. Usual day in Kherson. As the head of the Kherson's military administration, Galina Lugova, reports... The enemy is destroying mainly and specifically infrastructure facilities, multi-storied buildings and the private sector of the city. 
Terrible explosions all over the city, dozens of them tonight. Mortar and artillery fire. The maternity ward was destroyed. There is no longer a safe area left in Kherson. Halina Luhova, head of the Kherson military administration. This is the bridge on the road from Mykolaiv to Kherson on the M14 highway. Completely destroyed by Russian troops. People use detours here because this is the role of life, literally, for Kherson. Evacuation, humanitarian aid, transportation, logistics for business, you name it. The highway has already been examined by Ukrainian experts and repair works started. Road workers are sure that they will manage it all in a few months. Yet, despite the Russian terror, right at this very moment, Ukraine is promptly restoring its infrastructure no matter what. And almost 90% of the residents of Kherson and nearby cities already have power in their homes. While the heating season in occupied Mariupol has not even started, confirms Mariupol Vadim Boychenko. This occupation authority is not capable of anything. Only the Ukrainian authorities can ensure the vital activity of the city of Mariupol and the occupied territories, taking into account the expertise, knowledge and approaches that were used in the city of Mariupol. Accordingly, it was necessary to prepare for winter since March. And we all know what happened in the Mariupol in March. Nothing is working in the occupied city. I want to stress that out in the very city that Russians wanted to have so badly that they have been shelling it for months in a row. And once they have what they wanted, nothing is working. Ain't that the best characteristics of what Putin's empire really is? An insane accumulation of hopeless claims, unfulfilled promises, empty slogans, impotent plans on omnipotent dreams of world domination all under the bone of one skull and the roof of one bunker. Apparently, and absurdly, the Ukrainian authorities will have to restore the land that Russia has occupied. Because Russians just can't. Today, December 12th, the Russians shelled Kherson and its suburbs again. A woman is killed and four civilians injured, the prosecutor general's office reports. Why won't Russia stop already? The world is asking. Because it can't, Ukraine answers. Ukrainian prosecutors began a pre-trial investigation on the numerous facts of violations of the laws and customs of war, combined with intentional murder. Oh, and there will be more. Russia is acting as it always had. Led by its yet another insane Pied Piper, it's heading straight for the Airbus. Political, economical, national, cultural disaster. And instead of a protest, revolutionary indignation, national unrest against Putin's dictatorship, oppression and insane abuse of power, we see national humility and flee from the country. Poverty outside the big cities of Russia, the destroyed, captured, but never restored Mariupol. All this sends a clear message to the world. Putin's Russia is a recycled bin full of moldy Soviet ideas of world domination that have long since become obsolete. The only thing left for their elderly herald is to grab a nuclear club. Oh no, not to attack. He understands clearly it will be the very end of it, just to Delay the inevitable. But no worries, dear world. Ukraine is here for you to make sure you are safe. And that is why. Glory to Ukraine. Now, please, let me shortly brief you into Russia's future. Please take your seat. You may even close your eyes for a moment and listen to this. Imagining that you are Vladimir Putin himself. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi pulled out of his annual meeting with Putin after he threatened to use nuclear weapons in the Ukraine war. Sources of the publication said that relations between India and Russia remain strong, but it is not too good for Modi to talk about it publicly now. Morocco will provide Ukraine with spare parts for T-72 tanks. This is the first time 
that a country in Africa provides military assistance to the Ukrainian side. It is worth noting that Morocco participates in the meetings of defense ministers in the Rammstein format. Uzbekistan refused to join the gas union with Russia and Kazakhstan. According to the Minister of Energy of Uzbekistan, his country cooperates only on a commercial basis and will not adhere to political conditions in exchange for energy resources. Kazakhstan also refused the gas union with Russia. Deputy head of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Roman Vasilenko, citing Kazakhstan will not allow its territory to be used to circumvent sanctions. The leader of China made it so that the Kremlin no longer stammers about the use of nuclear weapons, says political tech specialist Boris Tizenhausen. If China joins the sanctions, the economy of the Russian Federation will ground, so Putin, or you as Putin, should listen to Beijing's instructions carefully. In addition, China leases significant territories of the Russian Federation for its needs. You also should not forget about that. After the leaders of the European states said, please don't use nuclear bomb, we are living in a modern world, this provoked Putin more. And when the leader of China, of which Putin is actually already a vassal, said this, then he need to obey. In a conversation with Biden, Zelensky suggested convening a global peace summit during the conversation. Both presidents of Ukraine and the USA also agreed on their respective positions before the G7 summit, which will take place today. I was glad to feel in the conversation that our formula for peace is perceived positively and this gives optimism. The faster the points of the formula are implemented, the stronger the guarantee of the security of Ukraine and everyone in Europe is ensured, said Zelensky. Just spoke with President Biden, as always, subjectively, usefully. We have strong agreements. I thanked for another package of military support. We discussed our further defense cooperation, air defense, artillery, protection of our infrastructure, energy, its restoration and financing were discussed. We will not stop. We will fight for freedom and pass this winter. The U.S. leadership remains steadfast and I am very grateful. Whatever you, as Vladimir Putin, have just felt about Hearing this, you can be absolutely sure that the Kremlin just won't react. They say Putin just doesn't use the internet, facts or reality. Preferring to wallow in the mire of great Russian dream. And this is rather good news. It was Henry Keane. See you tomorrow on a Daily Europe Up show on Freedom TV channel.